John Howard and his team specialise in taking on sites which are left part finished when developers, builders, lenders run into trouble. And the wine rack on the waterfront in Ipswich was a fine example of what they do. A victim of the financial crash in 2008, the building sat for many years as an empty concrete shell resembling a wine rack, hence the name. But from an eyesore it was transformed and seen through to completion at a cost of £26 million. That included a £15 million loan from the government's Homes and Communities Agency, at the time the biggest loan made to a private company. 150 new homes created, striking and sought after. But for John, how much of a challenge did it represent? Massive challenge really. And of course because we're based in Ipswich and this is in Ipswich on Ipswich waterfront, there is even more pressure because everyone knows you and, uh, and it stood here for probably eight or nine years not being done. So it, it, you know, it was a bit of an eyesore on the landscape and of course you know, everybody's willing you to do well with it and there's a lot of goodwill but you still have to perform, you still have to get the project funded, up and running and completed and sold. And are you seeing more and more of these unfinished schemes because developers are hitting trouble for whatever reason, but I imagine primarily because of the state of the economy? Yes, we are. We're seeing more and more of these coming up. I mean, some of it perhaps is because of what's happened with COVID and so on and the lockdowns. And all the co also the building costs have gone up tre tremendously and people have been caught out, uh, which is understandable. And what I would say to anyone um, who's got a development that's looking like it might be getting into trouble, then, you know, contact us early. Don't, don't leave it until it's in the hands of the bank or the receiver. Uh, which we work a lot with. We work with banks and receivers a lot. But also, if you can come to us sooner, we might be able to help you put some money into the deal to get it completed, get the development completed, and that's very important. But that's a tough thing, because I imagine most developers would like to try and work their own way out of trouble. Of course they would, and we understand that, and we're happy to work with them. But, but sometimes it, it's far better to work with someone uh, like ourselves than it is end up with a bank taking it back and, and a receiver being appointed. So if you can get in early, that's great. But if not, what are the routes in for you? Is it through banks and receivers, through contacts? How do you find out about these projects? Mainly through banks and receivers. What normally happens is, it, is the bank call the loan in uh, and then it takes probably a year, year and a half from that point to get to a situation where there is a, a, a receiver is appointed and the property goes on the market to be sold. And of course the receiver knows nothing about the issues or the problems on the site. It's up to the purchaser, normally us, hopefully, to, to, to analyse and find out what all the problems are before we purchase. And we have a, a system, as I said to you, we have a system how we do that quite quickly um, to make sure that you know, it's going to be a successful development. And that's based clearly on experience, the skills of the team you have around you, which, I, as I know, is a, is a small team, but they know their stuff. Are there any other people who do what you do with this kind of thing? I'm sure there are, and I'm sure on the very, very big schemes there are that there are you know companies about who do. But on on the level we're at, which is anything from purchasing for half a million up to ten million, there aren't that many of us doing it because it, you know there is a risk involved in it, and you do need to know what you're doing. You need to have a lot of experience in order to do what we do. And in doing this, one of the things you've done is to set up the John Howard Recovery Fund. How does that work? Well, very simple, really. The fund is, 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 is there to support and help fellow developers who have got challenges within their development and perhaps because the build costs have gone up, haven't got the funds to finish it. So we can come in and bring the funds with us to finish the project. Or if it's a bank, we can do the same. We can put funds in to get a development finished so it doesn't need to end up with a receiver. If it ends up with a receiver, then we can obviously purchase it off the receivers, which we do on, on, you know, on quite a few occasions. They've taken on sites around the UK. This one is in Collingbourne Avenue in Birmingham, a site bought through a receiver after a small bank hit problems, leaving the developer in trouble too, having already spent around a million pounds here. And picking up the pieces is a complicated business. It's always difficult because it's like investigating a, a murder with no suspects because everyone has departed. Uh, and you need to unravel what's happened and make sure that everything is they've done is correct. You know, are the properties, are they built? If they're partly built, are they built in the right position? We need to measure them. We need to make sure that everything that's been done has been done properly. Otherwise, it's all going to be knocked down and start again. 
So it's very important that you really know what you're doing with these. It, 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 you know, they're not for the faint-hearted, and certainly you wouldn't get a, 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 a new developer coming in uh, being able to handle such a complex and difficult scheme. Uh, and is it pretty routine across all these developments that actually what you do better than most is you work really quickly? Absolutely. We, you know, most people that come to us, be it a receiver, a bank or an individual, they want to complete the transaction as quick as possible. Because they're a challenge to purchase, because you need to get as much detail as possible before you purchase them, sometimes that's not always possible. Sometimes we have to take a little bit of a view. And of course, if you're borrowing the money from the bank, a bank aren't going to take a view on anything really, uh, and probably rightly so. So what we tend to do is purchase them, unravel the problems, uh, get rid of all the problems, and then move on from there. So we quite often have to purchase it first before we can sort any problems out. And you were telling me that when you come to a site like this, there are three areas of expertise, if you like, of value you can add for an investor or a developer. Just, just talk me through those. One is that we can come in as a consultant and say what needs to be done and help them do it. Secondly, we can come in and put the money in to get it finished because quite often there's no money left to finish a project. So we can come in, put the money in and do a joint venture with the current owners or the bank. Uh, and thirdly, we can buy the property quickly with cash and get on with it ourselves and get it completed and sold. So just to recap on those three key areas in which the team can help through the John Howard Recovery Fund. They can come on board and act as consultants. They can put in money to get the scheme finished as a joint venture. Or they can buy up the site quickly with cash and see it through to completion. 300 miles north of Birmingham, another site they took on in the village of Ladybank, about an hour's drive from Edinburgh and close to St Andrews, the home of golf. Here, there are 34 homes. It's another scheme which hit financial trouble, the start of what can be a frustratingly long process. It takes a long time between a developer getting into trouble and it finally being sold via a receiver, sometimes up to two years. So in the meantime, these poor residents in this area have had to cope with a part finished development, which doesn't look good, isn't good for the community. Um, you know, potential vandalism, again, and everything else, like we said at Collingbourne, very similar here. Uh, just to take you back, you made an interesting point. You said about how things kind of get worse and worse. Why does that happen? When someone gets into trouble, is it because they keep trying to find a way out? They don't like to admit they've gone wrong. What's the main cause of that? I think you're, what you've said is absolutely right. What happens is it starts to go wrong and then people either bury their head in the sand a bit and hope it's going to improve and it doesn't or uh, other, other, they think more funding's coming and they can't get the funding from another bank and then they go into default with the existing bank, which means that the bank then charge higher interest rates than they were originally to them because you know, they've gone into default, it's taken longer than they thought, and the whole thing just snowballs. And my advice to anyone is that if you're involved in a development and you're looking for help, get it sooner than you think you need it. Talk to us or companies like us sooner because our recovery fund gives you the opportunity to get out of trouble before you get into it, if you like. We can come in and put some money into the project to get it completed before you know, the banks start getting more difficult with you, potentially. So that would be my message, is always anticipate the problems that you, you think you're going to have and pick up the phone and get some help sooner rather than later. What are the kinds of problems, John, when you've had a site like this, particularly with the infrastructure, when it's laid idle, what, what kind of problems does that pose? The real problems of anything that's exposed to the sunlight, like the yellow pipes here, which are gas pipes, they've all got to be replaced. The uh, standard of everything that we have to do is so high now, and they won't, the authorities, quite rightly, won't allow you to have uh, wires and uh, pipes exposed that shouldn't be exposed, and these have been exposed for two or three years. You know, one of the big tricks that a lot of uh, disgruntled builders do is they put concrete down the drains because they haven't been paid. So one of the first things we do, for instance, is a, a survey of the drains to make sure they're clear and, if they, and, and they're in the right place, by the way, of course. So there's lots of things we have to investigate, like we said before. You know, it's an ongoing job all the time. And the one thing I always think about you and your team is hope is never lost. There's always a way out yes. somewhere. There's always a way of, of sorting a problem. Very rarely have we had to demolish what's there and start again. Now and again it happens because it hasn't got the right permissions, but it's unusual.
Yeah, and you're still smiling. I'm still smiling, you know. <laughs> someone said to me, what do you do every day? And I say, <laughs> I solve problems, you know. I solve problems. Uh, and that's what most property developers end up doing. And especially if you're specialising in, and you have a recovery fund, because the, you know, the name says it all, doesn't it? Uh, we are recovering properties uh, and get them, get them on the open market for families to buy. Also in Scotland is this stalled development which needs pushing through to completion. 12 part finished, two bedroom, two bathroom apartments in the fashionable town of Bothwell, just a few miles from Glasgow. Work stopped here in 2019, but now the site's been taken on by John and the team. There are lots of challenges, clearly. It, uh, water ingress is maybe one of them. We've got a little bit of problem up on the roof, nothing serious. Uh, what's, what's been done has been done well so far. It actually looks worse than it is, to be fair, this one. You know, some of the kitchens are in already, the bathrooms are in, they're good quality. We've got to try and match them up, of course, because if they're two or three years old, are they in stock anymore, things like that. There's lots and lots of small problems that you have to uh, deal with prior to starting the job. We don't want to start any job unless everything is absolutely organised and ready to go. And that means a full schedule of works from Jack, our building surveyor, a fixed price contract from the contractor um, so we know exactly where we are and we know exactly how long it's going to take to do. That's the only way to do these jobs. I don't get worried, there's always a solution um, and I think like I say because we've worked on this for a few, you know, a month or two really now, we've found out the main issues and we're working out the solutions to those issues. You know, I, I think there is always a solution and if you've got the right people on board around you, you can work through them. This is a really, really smart area outside Glasgow. A lot of footballers live in this area. It's very, very popular. Uh, some good restaurants, great access onto the M74. So, you know, we're very hopeful that this will be a very successful development. So if people at this moment are, have a development with problems or in the future they do, what, what should they do to get in contact? The best thing is just to get in contact with me personally. I'm always available. Um, and that can be done through contacting johnhowardproperty.com.